Amen. Amen. If you have your Bibles, I'm going to open up to Luke chapter 1. This morning I'm going to read from the, the archaic King James Version, which I love. Luke chapter 1, starting at verse 26. And it says, And in the sixth month the angel Gabriel was sent from God into the city of Galilee, named Nazareth, to a virgin, espoused to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind, pondered in her mind, what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said to her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus, and he shall be great and shall be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be? Seeing I know not a man, how can this be? How can this be? And the angel answered and said, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she has also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her who is called barren. For with God nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold the handmaid, behold the servant of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. How can this be? How can this be? How can this be? This is the question. How many times have you found yourself asking yourself that question? How can this be? How can this be that I've wound up in this emotional place? How can it be that I've wound up in this job? How can it be that I wound up in this relationship? Or how can it be that I wound up outside of this relationship? Or how can it be that I wound up in this financial mess? Or how can it be that I wound up in this church or in this ministry? Or how can it be that I wound up a pastor here? How can it be, God? How can it be? When we began, church, eight years ago, we began with a clear belief and a clear understanding that with God all things are what? That's right. With God, all things really are possible. Let us bow our heads. Almighty God, we come before you because with you, all things really are possible, God. Speak now into our hearts this day, the Christmas story alive within us, Lord God, called to still bear the Christ child. Speak into us now, Holy Spirit. Overshadow us and fill us up, Lord, that we might hear, that we might see, and that we might do and be all that you desire of us. We ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now for the sake of the sermon, I'm going to start with a story. I'm going to read a little story to begin, which will tie in later on in the sermon. It's not a true, it's not true, but just go along as if it was because it works that way, okay? <laughs> it's allegedly a report on global organized crime from the Center of Strategic and International Studies. And according to this report, the FBI agents conducted a raid on a psychiatric hospital in San Diego that was under the investigation for medical insurance fraud. So after hours of reviewing thousands and thousands of medical records, the dozens of agents, they worked up an appetite and they were hungry. The agent in charge said, okay, I'm gonna order some food. So he called a nearby pizza parlor, a delivery service, and he ordered a quick dinner for his colleagues. And the following telephone conversation took place and was recorded by the FBI because they were taping all the conversations at the hospital and it went like this. The agent said, hello, I'd like to order 19 large pizzas and 67 cans of soda. And the pizza man says, and where would you like them delivered? And he says, well, we're over at the psychiatric hospital. And the pizza man said, this is the psychiatric hospital? And the agent says, well, that's right, I'm an FBI agent. 
And the pizza man said, you're, you're an FBI agent? That's right, just about everybody here is an FBI agent. And the pizza says, okay, and you're calling from the psychiatric house? That's right, that's right. Listen, don't go through the front doors, they're locked. We got them locked. You got to come in the back, because that's where the service doors are. You got to come in the back. Don't go through the front. And you say you're all FBI agents. That's right. How soon can you get them here? Everyone there is an FBI agent. That's right. Now, don't forget, come to the back. How are you going to pay for this? I have my checkbook right here. And you're all FBI agents? That's right. Click. Mm. Stop and think a second. Go back. You're Mary. In comes Gabriel. Don't you think you'd kind of feel like that guy? The pizza man on the other side. Oh, hello there. Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. Now, none of us have had the privilege or the honor that Mary had to have an angel come into our very midst and being that we could see with our own eyes. But she did. Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with thee. Scripture tells us, I just read it to you, was she hallucinating? Was it a dream? It says very clearly that she pondered what this angel was saying to her in her heart, like, what's going on here? Something's not right. Is he talking to me? As she ponders, the angel says to her, don't be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Don't be afraid, Mary. You have found God's favor. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son and you will name him Jesus. And he will be great. And he will be called the son of the most high and the Lord will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. And here's Mary, totally bewildered, and she says to the angel, but how can this be? I'm still a virgin. How can this be? Now, in all honesty, how many times do we ask ourselves that same question? How can this be, God? How can this be? This isn't just Mary's question, you know. You know how many times I've asked myself that question since June? How can this be, God, that you want me to leave a place that I love so dearly and the people that I hold so dear to my? How can this be? How can this be, God, that you come as a baby? That you come as a baby to make yourself like us? so that you can save us. How can this be that God can decide in his infinite wisdom and his gracious mercy and say, okay, this group of people, I want you to be me over here so that other people can find me. How can this be that God can come to you or to you or to you or to me and say, okay, I'm gonna make a difference in your life. I'm gonna change you because I want to use you to change other people and to make a blessing in other people's lives through you. How can this be? Now, we know how the angel answers Mary's question. She goes, how can this be? And what does the angel say? Because God is pleased with you, Mary. God is pleased with you. Think about that. God is pleased with Mary. Does that mean God could be pleased with you too? God is pleased with you and you will have a son. The Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God for nothing is impossible for God. Did you get that? Nothing is impossible for God. So could it be that the answer to Mary's question is the same answer to our own individual questions of how can this be? Could God really be pleased with you, Pastor Tom? Could God's favor really be showering out on you? Could that be the answer to this? How can this be that this is where I am, that he favors you? that he loves you, that he desires to overshadow us more than we desire to be overshadowed, that he desires to conceive within us that good work more than we are willing to be conceived with the goodness of God. Could it be that he wants to work in us and through us something which is impossible? There's a lot impressive about the Christmas story. A lot. 
But the thing I find most impressive about this particular account of Luke about Mary is the end of the story, how she responds to the angel Gabriel, how she responds to the call of God that's on her life. She says it like this, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. Even though she says, well, how can it be? The very next thing she says is, nevertheless, I'm your servant. Whatever you want, God, let it be so. What faith? That is tremendous faith. What trust? Mary had incredible trust. I don't think I'd have had that kind of faith and trust. I wish I had that kind of faith and trust. I'm still whining. <laughs> but in reality, she didn't. She followed God. I'm sure she thought, how can this be that I'm the one that found favor in your sight? How can this be, God, that you would pick me? Surely, God, you've mistaken me for somebody else. Even though she's the one that asks the question, listen now, even though she's the one who says, why? Even though she says, how can it be? She still stands at the ready, fully prepared to accept the answer. And you know what that answer was? Because with God, nothing's impossible, Mary. Because with God, not only is nothing impossible, Mary, but God is going to be with you and he wants to bless you. And through you in this virgin birth, he's going to bless the entire world. She just couldn't see it from her paradigm. But she didn't have a strategic plan for that one. Let's see, I got to birth a child. Let's see, let's see what we're going to do in here. Seriously, what tactics do I have to overcome? Up, oh, better get a husband. <laughs> Think about it. Impossible things, brother. Seemingly impossible things that he has called us to are not impossible things. Tongues may flap this way. Tongues may flap that away. I like this. I don't like this. I want it this way. I don't like it that way. Nothing is impossible with God. When God calls something into being, he puts his hand upon it. And if we are willing, because you see, that's the other thing here. Was Mary somebody special? No. As a matter of fact, Mary lacked all the credentials necessary to be the one to birth the Savior of the world. She was too young. She was too inexperienced. She was single. She was a woman. All these things, you turn around and you say, why would he pick her? Why not some great king man to do something great through? No, he chose a woman. Why? Because the same thing that was available to Mary is available to you and I today in 2007 going into 2008 and God still wants to do the same thing with us. The grace and the favor of God are with you. And that is all any of us ever need no matter what our circumstances are. Through Jesus Christ, did you hear what I said? Through Jesus Christ, those in Christ have been called by God. They have been chosen by God. They have been chosen by God to do great things. Jesus told his disciples greater things than he did. Chosen to bear fruit, to bear witness. But the question is, is do we have the same thing going for us? Oh, we got the grace of God. We got the favor of God. But do we have the other thing Mary had going for her, going for us? Do we have the willingness that Mary had? Do we have the willingness to accept what God says into our lives? To be a servant. Here I am your servant, God, is what she said. Be it unto me according to your word. Do we have the willingness to allow the Holy Spirit to come upon us the way the Holy Spirit wants to come upon us? Do we have the willingness to believe that with God nothing is impossible? Do we believe that he's with us? Or do we still think that we're orphans walking through this wilderness alone. Mary was willing. Are we willing to follow where God is leading us to go? And I know, I know, I know, I know. We all know our inadequacies. We all know our shortcomings. We all know our failures. We all know our sins. Yes, we all do. And deep down inside, if we took a look at ourselves and we said to ourselves, okay, I'm not really worthy of being used by God, you'd be right. There's nobody worthy of being used by God. We say things like, well, if God only knew the kind of person that I was, he would, he already does. He uses you anyway. Because God works through imperfect people. He still chooses to do his ministry through us. 
and there's none of us. All of us, all of us, all of us, all of us, all of us have lived lives that are less than what God would like them to be, and if we're honest with ourselves, less than what we would like them to be as well. Amen? Amen. That's right. So I want you to say with me, nothing is impossible with God. Go ahead, say it. Nothing is impossible. Say it again. Nothing is impossible. Now I want you to say nothing. 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 That's right. Doesn't matter what it says on paper. No. Doesn't matter what it says in the checkbook. No. Does it matter what it says? No. Unless it's coming out of this book here, then it matters a whole lot what it says. And it says in this book that those promises are promises that are given to be acted out through you. Through you. Not just the pastors here, through you. Every body part in this body of Christ has been given the mission to birth the Jesus Christ because he's coming again, church. He's coming again, church. He's coming again. You know, we sing, I will sing of the Lord. He is my refuge. What a mighty God. In him do I put my, my trust. Do you really? From a distance, I've been looking at a bunch of different things. As I look, I see a lot of different things. I see a lot of wonderful, terrific things, and then I see a lot of lack of trust. I see a lot of lack of trust. You believe God's going to give you what he promises to give you in all things? I do believe that God said nothing was impossible with him. Yet I can tell that there's some that are not tithing. I can look and I can see the figures and I can determine that there are some that are keeping that 10% for themselves not giving God what's holy and declared his own because there isn't the trust or the willingness to be the servant in the giving area. I can tell that there's some ministries that are needing some help that are not getting the help they need because the schedules are too full or too busy somewhere else to give that hour or that two hours over here because we're not trusting that God can do your to-do list better than you can. And some are mumbling and grumbling because they're not trusting that we're going in the direction that God wants us to go because things are changing just a little bit. Could it be that it's going exactly the way God wants it to go, though it be different? Amen. Amen. Like it or not, whether we approve or not, God is sovereign. And God is God is God. And if he gives us a ministry and he gives us a mission, he always gives us what we need to fulfill that ministry and that mission by his favor and by his grace and by the power of the Holy Spirit alone. The Holy Spirit alone. You see, it was God's power. It was God's Holy Spirit. It was God's creative force that did the work inside of Mary. Mary could no sooner birth the Christ child on her own than she could fly to the moon. And guess what? We can't do God's ministry ourselves either. Only with God. Hallelujah. We need God's power, God's Holy Spirit power. We can no sooner fulfill the vision that Pastor Tom is casting in our own strength, in our own talent, in our own intellect, by our own checkbooks. We can only do it by the power of the Holy Spirit. Now listen, when you answer yes to God's call, even if it's just to become a Christian, to follow and to start walking in baby steps in the direction that God wants to take you, it is not easy. And those who've made the commitment to walk know the struggles. They know them really well. The heartfelt challenges that come up that God digs deep into our character and he says, okay, we're growing up here. We're growing up here and we have the choice to either walk away or grow up with God. Mary followed willingly. How can it be? She didn't understand, and though she asked the question, she did not have all the answers, and she still went with God. And just like Mary, it's for us too, church. This is Christmas. This is Christmas time. The greatest time to be a witness for the gospel of Jesus Christ. The greatest time to talk about your faith because the whole world's celebrating it, whether they understand it or not. Seriously. Listen. The very life of God is conceived within us and nurtured within us only if we are willing to let it be so. Did you hear what I said? The very life, the well up, the springing, the stirring of the birth pains are only going to happen and be conceived and nurtured inside of us if we are willing to allow it to be so because it happens through God's power and not 
our own. How many know that it takes the transforming power of Jesus Christ in their lives to make a difference? How many know that? Let me see your hands. That's right, because it does. Well, right here, right now, today, another unlikely choice is being made, realistically. God spoke through an angel to Mary there. But God gives us his word today, and he speaks through his word into our hearts. And he's speaking into our hearts this morning because we, too, have been chosen to give birth to Jesus Christ right now this season, to give birth to the coming again Savior, to ignite the world for Christ one life at a time. Now more than ever, this is not something that just happened 2,000 years ago. This isn't just Mary's story because the Christmas story is about you, it's about me, it's about us it's about Christ rising up inside of our bellies and then us bringing forth and birthing out the truth the transforming truth that has happened in our lives and we tell somebody else the story now you have a choice that's great pastor and then leave here and do nothing absolutely nothing as it was for Mary. May it be for us today. I want you to close your eyes for a second. I want you to pray a silent prayer right now and ask the Lord to use you. I want you to listen. God's angels are ministering beings. that his voice might say to us, greetings, I'm with you. I am with you. I see your loneliness. I see the depression that you're going through. I see your overwhelmedness. I see your fear of losing your job. I see all the things that make you feel like you're all alone. I see you're struggling in your relationship. I see your finances a mess. I see your heart broken. I am with you. Let's open our eyes. God is with us. God is with us. And if that is true, then the assignment and the project that Mary got, we're a part of it as well. Right here in 2007 and 2008. We are being called to birth Jesus Christ ourselves. It's not the role of your elders and your deacons and your pastors. It's every Christian's role and responsibility, especially. And you know what? It is an honor. It is the highest honor to tell someone about Jesus Christ. You have been called to bear Christ, to carry Christ into the world. And it doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter where you've been. And it certainly doesn't matter where you are today because God is not bound by your limitations. He is not bound by your inadequacies or your failures or your excuses. God is not bound. He sees beyond them to untapped potential and possibility. But we forget that. We think we have to do it all by ourselves. C-O-H-S-S. Nothing is impossible with God. Let us bow our heads. Loving God, as we approach the day of Jesus' birth, Lord, help us to throw wide open the doors of our hearts in preparation. Help us to sense the importance of what's happening now and what happened so long ago with Mary. Lord, help us to remember the words of the angel and the prophets and the teachers of old, Lord God, and to celebrate all the promises that you made through each one of them, God. Help us to take a firm hold of the meaning of all these things and to know in the depths of our being that even now, even right here this morning, that you are seeking us, God, that you are speaking to us, that you want to work through us and fulfill the promises that you gave. Promises not only to us as individual people, Lord, church family, but to our community and to the world. Lord, may this Christmas season be for us and for those around us a season of healing. May it be a season of hope and love and joy, a time of true sharing and rejoicing in all of the earth, God. 
Lord, we pray for those who are in need around us, Lord, those who need the second birth, who need Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, and those who need a tender touch and a healing word. We pray for our children, God, that you will continue to guide them and use us to do so. Those with no home, Lord, those who are hungry, those who are thirsty, those who are innocent, Lord, and all who trust in you. Father, bless the humble and the powerless, Lord, and bring down from their thrones those who are full of pride and hate, Lord. Soften their hearts and lead us to them, God. We ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Love. Love. Love is the most important part of the Christmas story. Mary loved God who first loved Mary. Love, Jesus Christ, came down and then Mary gave up her right to be her own. How can this be? It can be because nothing is impossible with God. The challenge I leave you with this Christmas, will you still bear Christ? Will you still be bearing the Christ story this Christmas? Because every person sitting here hearing these words today has somebody at their work, as a neighbor, in their family, or right here, somewhere, that needs the good news that you carry with inside of you. The question is, is will you ignore it and turn the other way, or will you do as Mary did and said, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to thy word.